And you may be seated. Be seated. Well, good morning and Merry Christmas. Are you kidding me? I got to tell you, uh, last week my wife and I, we went to uh, Fazoli's. Is that how you say that? From North Dakota, I'm still learning all these languages. Went to Fazoli's. And guess who showed up at Fazoli's? Yeah, Santa Claus. It was unbelievable, the real deal. I mean, he comes walking in the door and he does his thing. You know what Santa does? Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas. Pretty good, wasn't it? <laughs> I told my wife if the church ever boots me out, I'm going to be a Santa Claus. I think I'd like that. So he comes in and he does his thing. He says, Merry Christmas to everybody in the room. And, and I'm not kidding you. It was like nobody was excited to see him. It was like people just kind of grunted back at him, like, huh, you know, you again. <laughs> but I was pretty fired up to see the guy. And so uh, I said, Mr. Santa Claus, can I get my picture taken with you? And he said, well, yes, you can. You know, and so I went up and stood next to him and got my picture taken. And, of course, you know what you got to do after you get your picture taken? Put it on Facebook. The whole world needs to see that I met the real deal. And... Uh, well, there's a family right behind us. And um, he said, would you guys like your picture with Santa Claus? And I'm turning around and I look at him and you won't believe this. They just said, no, we're all right. Yeah, Santa Claus. I couldn't believe it. So I told my wife, I said, babe, you get up there. You got to get your picture taken with Santa Claus, you know. And she reluctantly went up there. And, and it was just like a I was blown away because everywhere he went and talked to people, nobody was excited to see the poor guy. And I'm thinking, you guys, it's Christmas, you know? We're supposed to be excited about this day, right? I mean, we're supposed to be excited about this time of year. And isn't it amazing that many times during this season, everything but joy comes out of us? If you don't believe me, Go to the shopping malls this time of year. <laughs> I mean, isn't that amazing? I mean, the Christmas music is playing in the background, and we are beating each other, you know, to get to our favorite gift. That's just the way it is today. Now, I'm going to talk about some things today that uh, I want to be careful in how I talk about them. I want to tell you this morning, in our first service, there are several people that gave their lives to Jesus Christ this morning. Uh, which is always awesome. It's always exciting. I know this. As we talk about some things today, I believe this, that God himself, because he loves you today, is going to begin speaking to some of you. Um, you're not going to quite understand what's going on inside of you, but you know there's something stirring inside of you. I just want to encourage you with this. Don't fight it. Don't resist it. Don't put up your fists against it. Just allow God to do something in your life today, because I believe this. He's going to speak something special in your life today. We're going to be talking about getting the ultimate gift. That's our desire, isn't it? I mean, at Christmas, we are, we are working hard at getting the ultimate gift. In New York City, I don't know if you saw this recently, but there's a big billboard that was purchased by the American atheists who just have Christmas written all over them, don't they? The American atheists, they paid big money to put up a sign that says, who needs Jesus on Christmas anyway? And across the bottom of the sign, it said, nobody. Bah humbug, right? They paid big money to put this sign up in New York City. Well, I'm a follower of the news. They brought a spokesperson from the American Atheists on this particular news program. And I get pretty fired up about these things. I have conversations with the television during interviews like this. And I get pretty worked up about it. And and um, I was waiting for the host just to blast this poor gentleman out of the water. You know, Christmas. You know, how can you pull Christ out of Christmas? It's, it's just must then, you know. You have to have the Christ in there. And so here he was interviewing this man, a spokesman for the American Atheists. And he said, you know, why do you feel like it's appropriate for you to pull Jesus out of Christmas? 
And I was waiting for this incredible just debate between these two. And I was beginning to get pulled into the debate, but then something happened that this spokesperson from the American Atheist said that just changed the whole conversation that quite honestly not many of us could argue with. He said, here's the reality. He said, most people who claim Jesus Christ as their Savior, they can do Christmas every year without Jesus. He said, in fact, they prove it every year. He said, think about what Christians get excited about in Christmas that's different than anybody else. He said, they get all shook up about gifts and spending and going into debt and running to the stores and making sure that... And now listen, we talk about these things today. I'm not saying don't go buy kids gifts, all right? My kids are probably stirring in their seats right now saying, oh no, my dad's not going to get us gifts this year. Um, I can't wait for Christmas morning. We're going to have all the cousins here and my kids, and they're going to dive into gifts, and we're going to have a great time. It's going to be a, just a fun, fun celebration. We're going to eat way too much. It's just going to be a great time. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But every year we say this, man, we, we want to make sure that Christ is the center of our Christmases, Right? And what this American atheist said is, listen, you guys prove year after year after year that you really don't need Jesus in your Christmases. The guy who's interviewed him didn't have a good response for him. <laughs> he was probably thinking about his Christmas. I was thinking about, man, what I get fired up about Christmas. And so today I want to talk about the ultimate gift for Christmas. That's what we're all striving for, right? I mean, we are trying to find that perfect gift for that either special someone in our life, our husbands or our wives or, or our kids. In fact, um, my kids, they've asked for certain things and, and they're in this room today, so I've got to be really careful on how I tell this story. But, but there's a gift that one of my kids wanted that we couldn't get here in town. And so I called the town down the road and I said, hey, listen, we are looking for... And they said, well, lucky day, we have one. I said, can you hold it for me? Because it would be the perfect gift for him. It's exactly what he wanted. And they said, well, no, we can't hold it for you. But if you hurry here, you know. And so I hopped in the vehicle. My wife, we tore to this other community. And we go into the store. And I'm throwing elbows and, you know, drop kicking older ladies just to get to this <laughs> counter. And I said, it's me. I'm the one who called. Do you have this? And they said, oh, we're out. Somebody just bought it. Bought humbug to you, you know. And got on the phone and I called a, another store just 20 miles down the road and I said, hey, listen, we are looking for this ultimate gift for my child. Their Christmas will be absolutely destroyed if we don't have it. And so do you have this? And they said, yes, we have three of them. I said, can you hold them? They said, not a chance. I said, I will be right there. And so we hopped in the vehicle and we tore off that direction and, and we go fighting through people and we get to the counter and guess what they had? One left. Unbelievable. We got it. It was the perfect gift. I mean, now our Christmas can be fulfilled, right? Our kids can be happy. And I'm telling you, I cannot wait for our kids to open their gifts. They're going to be so excited. Even right now, I know they're stirring in their seats. <laughs> but that's what we do, right? We are looking for that ultimate gift. And we spend way too much money. And we work so hard to get that perfect gift just so that our kids and our family will be happy with that ultimate gift. But I want to submit to all of us today as we celebrate Christmas this year that already, more than 2,000 years ago, there was a God who loved you very, very much that he gave you and me the ultimate gift. A gift that nobody can top <laughs> a gift that you could have all the money in the world and and spend as much as you want but you'd never be able to top this gift it's the ultimate gift in jesus christ if you have your bibles with you open up to the book of luke if you don't the passage of scripture will be up on the screen and we're going to talk just for a few minutes about the ultimate gift that has been given for you and me luke chapter 2 says this in those days caesar augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph 
What a great guy, huh? Joseph. <laughs> he also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, to the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave him, she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. It's an incredible passage of scripture, isn't it? You do realize, and I know you do, that that's why we get all fired up about this time of year. I mean, that's why we get all excited to think that, that more than 2,000 years ago, all wrapped up in these swaddling clothes, placed in a manger was the ultimate gift for you and me. And here we are, this, this much longer, we're still getting all shook up about this Jewish carpenter. I mean, why is that? There's got to be something to him, right? I think in our history, and I love history, there's been a lot of good people born in this world. Some of you. There's been a lot of great people born in this world. But the reality is, is nobody has caused the stir that Jesus has caused. And more than 2,000 years ago in this stable was the King of all kings and the Lord of all lords being held by Mary. It's the ultimate gift, isn't it? The book of Romans 6, 23, it says this. For the wages of sin is death. We talk about that here. I can't stress enough. It, I wouldn't be a good pastor if I didn't stress to all of you that there's always consequences to sin. Sin is never okay. Sin always separates us from God. Sin always leads, according to Scripture, to death. And I know this because we're people. All of us were born into this. Scripture says for all of us is sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And, and I know this, that even in this Christmas season, there's, there's good people, great people, that have gathered here in this room today that are living in sin. I can't stress enough to you that according to Scripture, that always separates us from God. It always leads to death. But we have a God who's crazy about us today. That passage of Scripture goes on to say, but the gift, isn't that awesome? But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. You see, guys, it's a gift today. <laughs> that God saw us in our mess and God sees us in our sin. God sees us in our disparity and says, hey, listen, you guys, I got good news. I'm a great father. I have this incredible gift for you in Jesus Christ. And there was a day in our history that God loved us so much that he sent this incredible baby Jesus into this world. And that baby Jesus grew up and he walked among us. He talked with us. He healed people. He forgave people. He loved on people. He taught people. And scripture talks about how this incredible gift that God had given us eventually went to a cross and he paid for my sin and your sin it's an incredible gift isn't it I often wonder at Christmas why so many people maybe even some in here today why have they never opened that gift why have they never received that gift you see gifts are meant to be received right I remember when I was a kid, my parents are here today. Remember, what I say at Grace Naz stays at Grace Naz, all right? I'm going to deny anything if you tell them stories. I can remember as a child, we've talked about this, getting so excited about Christmas morning, and it's fun to see my kids there right now. I always remember just getting ready to dive into those presents, and, and uh, there's always every year, there's always a gift 
that didn't just say to Mike or to Kelly or to Sean or to Scott. There was, there was always at least one gift that said to all the boys. And we knew this, that if it was to all the boys, it was going to be an incredible gift. I mean, it was going to be awesome. And I can remember I was in fifth or sixth grade, and we had all these presents around us, and, and we had that one present in particular that was to all the boys. And we knew that had to be some gift. Because it was so great, it wasn't just going to be for one person. It was going to be for everybody. And I can remember as we were opening our presents, we said, okay, now let's open the one that's to all the boys. And we all gathered around it. And you know how kids are. They don't just like slowly open presents like some of you ladies do and save the wrapping paper. I mean, not a chance. We were tearing into it and paper was going everywhere and we were elbowing each other and we just couldn't wait to get inside and and see what the the ultimate gift was and you know what it was some of you are waiting for this aren't you we lifted the lid and we looked inside that box and we knew immediately that this gift was going to change our lives forever i mean we were going to be the cool kids on the block you know what it was? <laughs> Isn't it beautiful? I mean, isn't this the most beautiful thing you've ever seen in your life? Some of the teenagers are like, what's that box? <laughs> Do you put toast in it, you know? <laughs> a Nintendo. Now, over the years, we start to call this the old Nintendo, right? But, but when we opened it, it wasn't the old Nintendo. It was the new Nintendo. Oh, man, it's going to change our lives. Here's the rules with the Nintendo. I had two older brothers. They got to play it before I did. Just the way it went in my family. My two older brothers got to play it first. And, and of all the years, I mean, you guys won't believe this, of all the years, guess what day Christmas was that year? Sunday. I know. Do you imagine a worse year to get a Nintendo? It's on Sunday, and my dad was the pastor, so we had to go to church. I remember all of us, my two older brothers, they got to play Super Mario Brothers. And I think one of them played Duck Hunt, you know? Remember he had the little pistol? Has anybody ever here hunted ducks with a pistol? I know you haven't. (laughs) On the video game, maybe, but you know that wasn't made in the U.S. But I can remember just being, oh, we have to go to church now. And so my whole family, we we went to church after my two older brothers played, and I was sitting through church. I just couldn't wait to to get over. And, of course, my dad preached the longest sermon of the year that day and went on and on and on. And on and on and on and on and on. And I was thinking, Jesus, don't come back before he's done with this sermon. I so bad want to play that Nintendo. I got home, I got to play that Nintendo, and I thought, man, this is this is the ultimate gift. This gift is gonna change my life. And of course I got on the phone and called all my buddies and so you won't believe what I got in Nintendo. And they're like, yeah, we got one last year. I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> this is the best gift in the world. You know what I've discovered about this Nintendo? Over the years, we got these games. You guys remember these games? And as it got a wore out, you had a blow in it, you know? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about if you had these? And you had to place him in there right eventually. And maybe sometimes you had to stack another game on top of it before he stuck it in. And Eventually a new game system came out. And then that one wore out and a new game system came out. And eventually this one just got put in a box. And if you could come up close to this Nintendo, it's covered in dust. And I had to pull it out of storage. Probably haven't used it in more than 20 years. But at that time, it was the ultimate gift, you know? 
I think about that Christmas and I, I think, you know, I, I wonder what would happen if my parents, as they presented us that gift and they had it all wrapped up nice and placed it at our feet, if us brothers just kind of looked at each other and said, you know, Mom and Dad, we're not going to open our gift this year. We're just not going to do it. Why don't we just stick it back under the tree and, and we'll open it next year. They would have thought we lost our minds, right? Because kids don't do that. And I think now as a dad, the amount of joy that my parents probably got as they saw us dive into that. I think of our Heavenly Father. Do you know our Heavenly Father is a gift giver? In fact, listen to this passage of Scripture in the book of Matthew chapter 7. It says, which of you, if your sons ask for bread, will give them a stone? <laughs> or if he asks for a fish, will give them a snake? Or if he asks for an iPod, would give him an old Nintendo. If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good what? Gifts to those who ask him. We have a heavenly Father who is a gift giver. He so badly wants to give us good gifts. And the ultimate gift that he's given to every one of us is his son, Jesus Christ. The question I want to throw to all of us today is, here we are at Christmas. We love the gifts. But have all of you received that ultimate gift in Jesus Christ? Have all of you at some point in your life said, you know what, Father, I know you've given me this incredible gift of Jesus. And today I just want to say yes to it and receive it. You see, the sad reality is there's people that will come to church Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. And they'll go through the motions and they'll do the church thing. And, and we have fun at our church, don't we? I mean, we have an incredible church. If you're new to our church today, I'm telling you, you're at a great place. Um, there's a group of people that will love you regardless of what's going on in your life all around you. It's just a neat place. But our ultimate desire is at some point in your life, you'll receive that ultimate gift in Jesus Christ. The wages of sin is death, you guys, always. But God has given us this incredible gift in Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul wrote in Ephesians, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the, say it with me, gift of God not by works, so that no one can boast. So how do we receive that gift today? It's simple. It's not rocket science. The gift has already been all wrapped up for you. A baby was born more than 2,000 years ago, and this baby grew up and went to a cross to pay for your sin and my sin. How do we receive it today? Get this. You don't have to clean up your act right now. You don't have to jump through any hoops. You don't have to take any classes that we offer here. Today, the gift has been all wrapped up, placed in front of you. All you have to do is receive it. Scripture says that if you and I confess our sins, our God is so faithful and just, he will forgive you of your sins, completely wipe that slate clean. Isn't that the best news you could ever hear on Christmas? So my question for all of us, have you received that gift today? I have. Am I better than anybody? Oh, not even close. Just ask my wife. My wife has received that gift. Is she better than everybody? You bet she is. <laughs> but I'm telling you, I'm much better off today than I was before Jesus. Much better off today. Like everybody bow their heads and close their eyes and Nobody looking around. I know this. God has been stirring up something in some of you today. Some of you might feel challenged. Some of you might feel a little bit convicted. Don't feel bad about that. Just respond to it. I think there's some people in here today that just need to receive that incredible gift of Jesus Christ and simply say yes to him today. 
I'm not going to call you out. I'm not going to make you come up front, but maybe today there's somebody that just says, you know what? Today I want, to, I want it to be that day where I want to receive Jesus Christ into my life and I want to say yes. Would you just quickly slip up your hands and put it back down? All over this place, you guys. <laughs> All over this place. Isn't that phenomenal? What a great gift, isn't it? That God loved you so much that he would send his one and only son for you. <laughs> I'm going to do something together. I'm going to pray for all of us. And, and as we pray, those of you who raised your hand, I want you to do something. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give just a little 45-second pause where I'm just going to allow you to, to pray in your own heart. You don't have to pray out loud. But I just want you to simply say, God, I'm a sinner. I thank you for that incredible gift of Jesus Christ. And today I want, you to, I want you to forgive me of my sins. And from this day on, I'm going to follow you with my whole heart. Scripture says he'll do that for you today. Jesus, we love you so much. What a great gift you've given us in Jesus Christ. Can't say enough how grateful we are for that. I wonder where in the world would I be today if it wasn't for that incredible gift. And God, I'm thankful that you've offered us that gift. It's, it's already been wrapped. It's already been put under the tree and we're all gathered around it. And There's some in here today that want to receive that gift, Father. You know them. You know their hearts. And so, God, I'm just going to shut my mouth for a few minutes and they're just going to cry out to you and ask you to forgive them of their sins and come into their life. Thank you so much, Jesus. According to your word right now, there's a big old celebration in heaven today because of decisions that have been made in this place. God, we give you praise for that. We thank you so much for this time of year. And God, we're going to sing a song that just basically says we have come to adore you. And this Christmas, I pray that that's all of our heart today, that with all the craziness going on in Christmas, we want to make sure that we take this time to worship this great God who has given us an incredible gift in Jesus Christ. We pray this in Jesus' name.